Cobwebs are an excellent sign that it's time to deep clean the corners of your house, but they'll be back soon enough. A common belief is that cobwebs spontaneously form due to dust particles adhering to one another, but they're actually the work of spiders. Most cobwebs are formed from abandoned spider webs. Web building spiders create webs to catch their prey, but over time, dust accumulation and mechanical stress weaken the web, so spiders leave it behind and create a new one somewhere else. That's why you'll never find a spider on a cobweb. The creator of the web left weeks or even months earlier. One family of spiders, Therididae, earned the common name of cobweb spiders and are a family of more than 3,000 species who make particularly disorganized webs that lack any clear pattern. Most of these species are great hunters and make their webs a tangled mess on purpose. They anchor their webs to strong supports, like beams and walls, to build a three-dimensional trap. These webs are lined with sticky droplets that will snare unsuspecting victims, such as flies, to the web. However, this sticky property also attracts dust, pollen, and other substances in the air that can damage or lessen the efficacy of the web. This isn't the only family of spiders that create webs inside structures that may end up as cobwebs. Daddy longleg spiders, who were once called cellar spiders, belong to the Fulcidae family. Other webs with a funnel or tube-like shape come from funnel web spiders, while orb weaver spiders make geometric and circular spider webs. These you will often find outside in gardens and in trees, but they occasionally make the journey into homes, where their webs become cobwebs. Aside from cobwebs in the corners, there are also those single strands of dusty material that hang down from the ceiling, and spiders are responsible for these as well. Spiders are able to produce silk strands for travel and protection, and often use these strands as safety lines when swinging or lowering themselves to new places. These strands are different than the strands a spider would use to make a web. The silk they use to move in this way is called ampulet silk, and while it may be used as the outer scaffolding for a web, it doesn't make up the majority of a web. Similar to their normal webs, these safety strands also gather dust over time, resulting in those dangling strings that we've all had the displeasure of walking through. The persistence of cobwebs is due to how long a spider web lasts. Spider silk is a tough and hardy material, which gives some level of immunity against degrading and breaking down. Pollen and dust may cling to the web and make it useless for a spider, but a web doesn't just fall apart on its own. Research has found that even after years have passed, the mechanical strength of silk is largely maintained. Spiders can eat their silk and break it down through enzymatic action, but organic environmental breakdown takes much longer due to the complex amino acid structure of the silk. Spiderwebs can also be very difficult to spot due to the razor-thin strands with which they're made. And by the time you see them as cobwebs, thanks to a layer of dust, the spider is likely gone, constructing a less visible and more effective snare somewhere new.